everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a Rebecca Steam Monster High doll, making her into Tina Turner from the What's Love Got To Do With It video. I'll be sharing with you the hair rerouting, face up, and costume construction. So to start, I'm just pulling out some of her, I'm pulling out her hair. Uh, I cut it really super short, and then I'm using a hemostat to pull that out. And there she's nice and clean. If you'll notice, Rebecca Steam has a lot of these little dots around her face to create that steampunk look. And I'll need to remove those with some carving and sanding. But first I'm removing the face paint and uh, hair paint uh, with some pure acetone. So I'm using a carving tool to remove the dots the best that I can. It's a little easier than using an X-Acto knife. It's a little less dangerous. And you can see here, I tried to go in with a Dremel at first, um, very lightly on a very super low speed just to take those down a, a notch. And then I sanded it out with some very fine sandpaper uh, and did some wet sanding. I did a little carving on her lips too um, to help with the shape. If you're a supporter over on Patreon, I've been getting a lot of requests for carving tutorials. So this month's Game Changer Reward is me walking through how I did some simple carving on the mouth. If you're interested in seeing what I have to offer on Patreon, check out the link in the description box below. I have a library of mini close-up tutorials, game-changing learning modules and tips, and extra special thanks to my patrons for making these videos possible. So I rooted her with some brown alpaca yarn, so it's super soft and shiny. And then I added some of these blonde pieces to give her the frosted look. And I wrapped that up and added some craft glue to the inside of the scalp to hold that hair in so when there's minimal shedding when combing. So as usual, I start out with the eyes and shape them with the white and then go in and start to add the detail around them. So for some highlights, I'm going in with this light peach, which is a little bit too light, but after doing a lot of blending um, and adding some other colors it's and adding sealant, it does tone it down quite a bit. I just want to go in and pull out the uh, highlights and then uh, put in some of the undertones as well. And then also the dark shading for the cheekbones and over the scalp to just to give shape to the face. Pretty much exclusively use pan pastel, um, but I actually just recently got a pack of the new Arteza um, pastels, which are, um, as you guys know, this uh, Arteza is a artist brand that's a little bit more affordable. And I'm going to be doing a video in the next couple, the next couple video, one of the next couple videos will be me trying those out for you guys. So make sure to click the bell. Uh, to be notified, subscribe and click the bell to be notified when my videos drop so you'll be able to catch one of those. So I'm just going in with straight red since her lips are like a red in the video. Leaving a little bit for some highlights. I'm using a reference photo, a couple reference photos to shape the nose, nostrils. Since I'm adding in these super light shades like the peach and some, it looks like it's white but it's actually peach, um, her skin's looking like really dry here as I'm watching and kind of cringing but it starts to even out the more I blend it and I also add more colors.
So I'm using the pearlescent black pan pastel to give her a smoky eye. And I'm adding some of that light peach to the eyebrow or eyelid to keep a highlight there. So now you can see on the forehead I did quite a bit of blending and then at this point I've probably sealed it at least once. So you can see that it kind of toned that, that harshness, that dryness look, look down quite a bit. Now I am using some white pencil to do some uh, highlights over the lip and down her philtrum. And then I'm going in with a, a crimson red Derwent watercolor pencil to add some detail to the lips. Just a reminder, if you're wanting to learn at your own pace and have some step-by-step -step guidance, check out what I have to offer on Skillshare. I have a couple of beginner classes there, and if you sign up through the link in the description box below, you'll get two free weeks with no obligation to continue with the service. So at this point, I'm adding some detail to her eyelid, and I'm kind of wishing that Rebecca Steam has like a couple of uh, line uh, distinctive bumps on her eyes to create the surface for her stamp or the way that they do the face paint at the factory and I'm really wishing that I had sanded that down um, it needs some practice on the eyes though because I've done that to a I've tried on a couple of dolls to do some carving on the eyes and I struggle so if anybody has any tips on that let me know in the description box below that's I'm super struggling with being able to carve um, out at the eyelids because that would have worked a lot better I think for her look had I done that so for her eyebrows I'm giving a little bit of a highlight base before I start um, with the color and the shape or actually I'm just trying to get the shape of the eyebrow with a light color so then I can go back in and add <clears throat> the, the line work just kind of created a line to follow and then added a little bit of a highlight to make it pop a bit. So in with her eye color. So are you guys fans with, of Tina Turner's? Isn't she the most, uh, one of the best um, goddesses, rock goddesses from the 80s? I totally love her and um, in all of her history from this, you know, I guess 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, she really um, has been going strong for so many years and super talent. She's amazing to me. She still looks fantastic and she's still performing from what I can see. So onto the costume making, I'm just kind of winging it. I don't have any patterns that I am using for this particular dress. I do have um, a couple of patterns I use. I'm not a, I've been asked a couple times if I can share my patterns and I do share them with my patrons. They're in the library of rewards, um, but they're you know, not professional by any means. So I don't feel comfortable selling those. So I'm using this super stretchy uh, metallic sort of fabric and making her a tank top. And 
And since it's stretchy, it can just pull up or um, she can step into the tank top. I like to make all of my clothes removable. Usually I'll put a snap on the back or um, a hook or, or, and latch or something, but this one, um, I made it so that she could step into it and pull it up. In the very small areas where it's extremely difficult to get into the sewing machine, I like to use this uh, thermo tape. And uh, I've since got a little mini um, iron, but I sometimes use my flat iron to heat those up and it just creates like a glue. And then when you fold it down, you use the heat again to seal it. And it works really well in these really tiny areas so you don't see those um, my stitches are so imperfect sometimes that um, I don't like to show them where in those small areas. So using that thermo tape really helps. It's just kind of like a no sew tape. It comes in like sheets sometimes even. You can find it in the sewing department at uh, fabric stores or I think even at Walmart. I do use a lighter to singe some edges sometimes to prevent fraying. So if you guys do that, please use caution. And I'm just kind of um, fitting a skirt. This is also a stretchy fabric, it's stretchy vinyl, so she can pull this up as well. And just making a simple black mini skirt. So I'm using the flat iron to kind of iron down that hem. And I am stitching that hem um, because I don't want to put too much heat on this type of fabric to use that um, glue tape. I also just use some ribbon and some uh, metal wire to create a belt. So I just happen to have some jean fabric and I'm using, this is one of the patterns that I shared with my patrons. It's just a simple jacket pattern. And I used that for a base and then added some collar, uh, collar and belt to it. To, uh, and then some a little bit of like painting to add some aging to it to look more like the jean jacket she wears in the video. And there she is. I gave her some of the Monster High um, fishnets and some earrings and a necklace. Pulled her hair up on the side as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for being here and I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye.